Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Capassi and this is Dr. Aliwida and in this video we're going to show you how to assess the pupils and how to check for the RAPD which is a relative afferent pupillary defect. Um, we, this patient, uh, my colleague here, doesn't actually have an RAPD but we'll go over the principles and how we would go about assessing one. First thing we're going to talk about equipment. You'll need a muscle light, okay? This is, let's just bring it a little bit closer so you can see. A muscle light is a little light that connects to a standard handle, uh, with, in this case a Welch Allen handle. Turn it on and there's a light. What you can also use is a standard pen light to assess for IRPD. This version here is the Streamlight Pro, the Stylus Pro, and I particularly like carrying around because it's very, very bright. You can actually use it as a surgical light in the emergency room, have your nurse hold it there so you can do minor procedures. You can use it to assess the pupils and you can also use it as a, a multi-purpose everyday light if necessary. So let's go ahead and see how we're going to check these pupils. So here we have a zoomed in view of our patient's pupils. The lights have been turned down, okay, and we have some background illumination seeing his pupils here. So he's, he's dark adapted having his pupils uh, dilated. The pupil is actually not an anatomical structure, it's the lack of a structure, okay? The iris around it is what's forming the aperture of a lens system. So it dilates and constricts, changing the amount of light which is entering the visual system. The RAPD, the relative afferent pupillary defect, is looking at the difference in response to a standardized light source between the two eyes. Essentially what we're trying to find out is if the nerve is transmitting the same amount of light information to the brain between the two eyes. It's called a relative afferent defect because this test is relative between the eyes. If there is a neurological problem which affects both eyes equally, we don't expect to see an RAPD. Let's go ahead and see if we can illuminate this phenomenon in this patient. There's a direct and consensual response. The direct response being if I take the torch and I put it on this eye, I notice that this eye constricts. If you were able to notice the other eye, the consensual eye being on this side, you would notice that both eyes are going to constrict the same amount. Let's go ahead and turn the lights on to see if we can see this a little bit better. Here's our patient in the light now. The way to tell the difference of an ab if there's an abnormal pupil, the way to tell the difference is to test the pupils in both light and dark. And we'll talk about that a little bit later in our video. Let's look for the RAPD. So, I shine the light on this, on this pupil. The pupil constricts. Take the light away, shine the light on this pupil. The pupil constricts. Great, both pupils are working as expected. However, let's see relatively. I shine the light on this pupil but I look at this pupil, okay, to see if they're constricting the same amount. Put the light here, the other pupil is constricting the same amount. Switch, put the light here, the opposite pupil is constricting the same amount. This is known as the swinging flashlight test. The flashlight is swinging from one side to the other, and we're looking the, at the difference between the two eyes. How do we do this in practice? Shine the light at this pupil for about three seconds. Swing to the other side. Shine for about three seconds. Looking at both pupils to see. If this test was positive, what would it look like? I shine the light here. This pupil registers the light response, constricts both pupils. Great. After three seconds, I switch to the other side. This pupil has something wrong with it. There's something wrong with the nerve fiber layer in this eye. It doesn't register as much light entering that eye, the pupil would dilate. Both pupils would dilate because of the direct and consensual response. That would be a positive RAPD sign in this eye. Okay? That's how we do that. What about looking for an isochoria? Difference in pupil size. How do we judge that? Well, we look at the pupils in light and dark to determine which is the abnormal pupil. You can imagine that in dark, the pupils will both be dilated because in the dark we need more light to enter the eyes. So the troubled pupil will be small, it's not going to dilate very well. 
How about if a pupil is very dilated? Well, we're going to look at that in the light because in the light, we want our pupils to be constricted. We don't want the aperture to allow too much light. But the troubled pupil, say due to trauma, will be dilated. And that's how we can tell which is the troubled pupil by looking at them in conditions of dark and light. All right, that's all there is to it.